Well, hello and welcome to Understand Men Now. I'm Jonathan Asley of jonathanasley.com and I'm so excited to be shooting this short video for you today. Our topic, what's a good pace, pace for dating or relationships? What's a good pace? I'm trying to get my arms right. Uh, really quickly, if uh, the content here resonates with you, this is actually called, or actually, I, it's actually Jonathan from the heart. These are my Saturday videos, but these are very similar to the videos I shoot in my private group called Midlife Love Mastery. Check out the link below to join the group. Uh, it's a great way to interact with me on a regular basis, and I answer your questions by shooting short videos in the group for those uh, that ask questions. All right, our topic, what's a good pace to be in relationship? Um, so it's kind of interesting. I recently had an experience where um, I briefly dated a woman. This just happened in the last week or two weeks, I should say, where the pace was off. And I want to kind of share the story and tell me if this resonates with you. So um, she had emailed me from a dating site. Uh, I'll just be honest. It was match.com. Not honest. I'll be transparent. It was match.com. It's not honesty. Um, she wrote me first and she happened to have sought me. Uh, my profile actually has my book, What the Heck is Self Love Anyway, in the picture. And she noticed that my name was the same as the book. So she Googled me and she watched some videos of mine. And she goes, and she wrote me, oh my God, I like your work. I appreciate your wisdom, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I wrote her back and I wasn't sure if she was interested in me or, or interested in me from a dating perspective. Um, Oh, by the way, really quickly, my coffee says coffee tastes better when shared, my coffee mug. And my t-shirt says, I've got your back. See, no back, I've got your back. If you like the t-shirt, please post a comment below. So, um, so when I wrote her back, I wasn't sure if she was interested in me or was interested in me professionally. So we wrote her back, had a cute little message because um, we live local. And we end up getting on the phone uh, shortly thereafter. And we really, it was like, it was like starting in mid sentence. I literally felt that kind of comfort talking to her on the phone. And we planned a date for a few days later. And I was really excited because I'm attracted to her photographs. I got the sense she was attracted to me because she even uh, suggested that when we were on the phone. So I thought there was mutual attraction which is a great place to start because oftentimes in the online dating world, you're looking at pictures and you're like, I can't tell if this is 10 years old or they're wearing sunglasses or there's a, you know, their sushi plate that they ate the night before, which really makes no sense when it's all about trying to connect with a person or they've got photographs where there's tons of people around. I mean, and God forbid you ladies do that Snapchat crap on your photos. Oh my God, I can't stand that. Um, just a little FYI. Anyway, <laughs> So, um, so we had our date and I thought we had a great time. I mean, we really connected up. There was, we agreed that there was physical attraction and whatnot. And I'll be candid with you. I kind of came on strong and this relates to pace. I was excited. I hadn't been this excited in what felt like a decade. <laughs> I hadn't been excited on a first date. Have you ever felt that way where you just got excited? If you did, please post a comment below. I want to hear about it. So I probably came on a little too strong. And we had planned a second date uh, a few days later. And by the way, she literally lives a mile and a half from me. And the date was kind of flat. And she was tired. Uh, she expressed that she had a long day. She was tired. Um, but the, the energy just wasn't the same as the first. And so she was sweet enough to write me in the morning and I wrote her back and I, I could tell that something was off. I, I could feel that the pace between us was off. And sure enough, she wrote me back saying she felt pressure from me and basically saying I was being too forceful, too needy. And I thought about that and and I, I looked inward, and, and I'll be candid with you, I mean, it was a rejection. I mean, it, it really threw me for a loop. And then I started to beat myself up over it. I started to beat myself up for over it, as if I did something wrong, that my pace was wrong. And this is where I had to come back to my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? Because why am I beating myself up? I barely know this person. This person barely knows who I am. I'm going to get to pace in a second. 
But why I'm sharing this with you is oftentimes when something is off, we can beat ourselves up. And that's just not the right thing to do. It's, and I say not right, I don't mean it in a right or wrong, but it's, you know, there's no need to beat oneself up. But that's what I did because I was told I did something wrong. That's what it felt like. This reminds me of why I recommend the book from Brene Brown, The Gifts of Imperfection. The Gifts of Imperfection. The dating process isn't this perfect thing. And oftentimes when it's off, there's a good reason for it. So maybe I want you to think of pace like, a, like a two cars traveling down a road. And all of you know I talk about a two lane street, right? So what if my pace was driving at 50 miles an hour and her pace was 10 miles an hour? I'm not saying that's what it was. I'm just saying what if? To her, that's gonna feel like you're going too fast. Whereas I think when you meet the right person, the pace is actually along the same lines. The pace is relatively close to one another. Maybe I'm at the 50 miles and she's at 48 miles, or maybe she's at 49 and I'm at 47. But it's relatively close when two people meet. And when, and look at, I'm a believer of dating one person at a time. I'm a believer of dating one person at a time. Why? Because I think one of the fundamental problems in relationships today is a lack of commitment to the process. A lack of commitment. Lack of commitment to the relationship process, to the partnership process, and even the dating process. Now, some coaches will tell you, don't, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket because you have to protect yourself. You have to protect yourself. You have to put armor around yourself and date multiple, multiple people so you don't get sucked into one person. So what that does is effectively, it creates people as commodities. And I think that's one of the real issues going on today is a lack of a commitment to the process. I'm fully committed to the process. I'm interested in getting to know one person at a time. How long does it take to get to know a person? You could see each other three or four times in a two or three week period of time. It doesn't, if you live close enough and your schedules work together, it's not that hard to see someone a couple, three or four or five times in three weeks. People can't take three weeks off from, you gotta date so many other people to protect yourself. I don't think it's a big deal. Hey, everyone to each their own. This is just, I'm sharing my personal experience. That's why it's called Jonathan from the Heart. But then I thought about this later. Could I have sabotaged this? Could I have sabotaged this relationship by coming too strong? Because I, th I think when you, the, a good pace in relationship is when you're traveling at the same speed. So was I crashing into this person? Was I sabotaging it? What if I did? What if that sabotage was protecting me from something in the future? That's one way of looking at it. Maybe she sabotaged the relationship to protect her. By saying, and when I say sabotage, by saying, I went too fast. I'm not saying that's what it is. I'm just saying that could be. But I also believe thing, everything happens for a reason and everything happens for you and not to you. Everything happens for you, not to you. This is why I'm a believer, check out the book, Spiritual Partnership by Gary Zukoff. Spiritual Partnership by Gary Zukoff. By the way, all the links to the books is in the Jonathan Recommends, which is uh, in the description. And again, don't forget, these are personalized videos, just like in my group, Midlife Love Mastery. Check out the link below. All right. So I don't believe, I believe everything happens for. So what was the lesson here for me? And I'm sharing this with you because the pace of a relationship, it should be like, look it, I get. It was like a human being walking up to a horse, okay? They got spooked. Maybe that's what happened with her, okay? But again, that's a human being in a horse. When two horses come together, if they're aligned, they, they do what's called the sniff test. They sniff each other. They don't go sniffing other horses, they sniff one person to see if this is really the right relationship for them. And I think when two people are aligned to who they are and what they want, the pace is relatively in alignment. The pace is relatively in alignment. You know, it's interesting. I have a single person out there. I'm very selective on who I'd like to meet. Um, I actually approach this process more 
um, with an intentionality and purpose. And that might intimidate some women or that might turn them off. That's okay because I do know one thing, I'm in it for the long haul. I'm not here for the short run. And online, look at online dating is where most people are meeting these days, especially now with COVID. And it's not the perfect system. It's, a, it's not the perfect system. Mostly because we've got a lot of wounded people in there seeking connection and companionship and sex, but are incapable of actually being in a healthy, happy relationship. So you're swimming through a lot of murky waters, men and women alike. It's no different for me. My friend Max says I should use my YouTube channel to meet my wife. And look at I want to get married. So maybe I should put an application to marry Jonathan down there. That's what he suggested I should do, which I think is kind of funny. But I want to be in a relationship where I've got your back. Coffee tastes better with shared. And I think when you meet the right person, the, the pace of, a good, of dating and relationship is in line. You don't have to question it. It's not going to be hard. You don't have to feel, it's not going to feel pressure and it's not going to be overwhelming. Look, I got excited and I'm happy I did. It's a reminder that a good relationship, the right relationship out there is there for me. It's out there. And I'm not giving up on that because when we give up, that's when we don't find what we seek. And that's my invitation for you. Ah. Look, I didn't curse in this video. Oh, I'll say fuck, okay? <laughs> if anyone noticed that, please post a comment below. Hey, if you have any questions about this video or you think you'd like to join the group, check out the link to my VIP group called Midlife Love Mastery. All right, I'm gonna sign off this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm gonna reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm gonna ask you to turn to somebody and give them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love and we can all have a lot more love in our lives right now. Thanks so much. Wishing you a fabulous day. Bye-bye now.